Hello world, welcome to Geek for Geeks. In this video, we are going to be looking at slices in Go programming language. I hope you are excited, so let's get started. Slices like array also represent a list of elements. The code to update and access the slices element look much the same as the code to work within arrays element. However, slices are a little bit easier to work with than arrays once you know the proper technique. So, slices are more commonly used than array. A slice doesn't store anything by itself. It references a portion of an underlying array that holds the data. Most of the time, you won't have to worry about the underlying arrays. But it can cause some surprising bugs if you don't know how it works. So, I'm going to take a few minutes to show you the details. We'll start by creating an array and then slice some of it. This may not be the easiest way to use slice in your programs, but it works for the demonstration. Here we have an array of 5 elements. We'll create two slices based on it. The first will include index 0 of the array up until index 3, but including index 3. The second will include index 2 up until index 5, but not including the index 5, which is good thing because the array doesn't have an index 5. If we run this, it will print the underlying array as well as the two slices. Notice that the number index 2 as the underlying array appears in both the slices. Now let's try modifying that number and the underlying array at index 2. Then we'll print the array in both slices again. So now we can say array index 2 is equal to and we'll assign a number to it. Let's say 88. Try rerunning that and we'll see that the implemented index 2 of the underlying array has been updated. And so both slices reflect the changes as well. We can re-slice a slice to reveal more of the underlying array. So we can take the S1 slice and make a slice of that slice. So we can start off at index 0 of slice S1 and go up to index 4 which is 1 longer than the existing slice. Moreover, if we try running this, we'll see that the resulting slice is one longer than before and reveal one more element from the underlying array than it used to. If we try to do the same thing with the second slice though, we'll run into problems. If we were to say that S2 equals a reslice of S2 from 0 to 4, save that and rerun it, this time we get a runtime panic saying that the slice bound are out of range. That's because we tried to extend the slice beyond the end of an underlying array. There are a couple of functions that are useful for getting information about slice that will let us avoid that sort of situation. Just as it does for arrays, the len built-in function returns the length of a slice. The cap built-in function returns the capacity of a slice. This is usually the number of elements between the start of a slice and the end of an underlying array. So, we have restored our original code and added a couple of print line statement that prints out the length and the capacity of the two slices. Notice that S1's kept an S2's. S2 does not have any room to grow because it's right at the end of an underlying array. So, what can we do if we need to add a value to a slice, but we are at the end of an underlying array? Go offers a built-in function called append that can add a new value to a slice even if it's already at its capacity. Let's call append with our s2 slice and append a value phi to it. Now, append doesn't modify the existing slice. It returns a new slice with the same contents as the old one plus the new value of the appended at the end. So, it's very important that we assign the return value back to the s2 variable. Then, we'll print everything out again. So, we can look at the changes. So, I'll copy this print line statement up above which prints the underlying array as well as the S1 and S2 slices. Let's try running this and if we look at the output, we'll see the number 5 there on the end of the slice S2. Now, the question is, how did append add a value onto the slice S2 if the underlying array was already full? We know that arrays can't grow and shrink as slices can. The answer is that the pen created a new more significant array, copied all the elements from the shorter array into it and then written a new slice that points to a bigger array. We can see this if we print out the capacity of S1 and the capacity of S2 slices. So I will copy these two print line false here and return it. 
and we can see that the slice S2 capacity is now even bigger than slice S1. Well, that's because allocating an array is slow. So append gives us more room than we have asked for in case we are going to append more later on. If append runs out of capacity again, it will allocate even a bigger underlying array next time. You might be wondering, why I am showing you all of this stuff regarding underlying arrays? The answer is that I don't want you to be surprised by the behavior of what I am about to demonstrate. So now I have got rid of most of our experimental code leaving only the array, the two slices based on it and the call to the append. Now I am going to do as we did before and modify an element on the slice, I will do slice s2. Element 0, the first element and I will assign some completely different number to that like 88 for example. Notice that I am doing this before the call to the pen. Then as before, I will print out the array and the two slices based on it. Let's try rerunning this. As before, you can see that our changes reflected not just in the slice where we made it but in other slices and the underlying array as well. Now I am going to make a change to that same element of the second slice. But I am going to do it after the call to the append. So s2 element 0, the first element equals and we will do something utterly different. So for s2, the 0th element and the first element equals and we will do utterly different number again like 999. And as before, we will print out everything again, save that, rerun it. When we run it this time, you can see that the second slice was updated but the underlying array and the first slice were not. Remember, we said that append could create a new underlying array if it needs to. And that is what is happening here. The S2 slice is now using a completely different underlying array than the S1 slice. So changes in one place are no longer reflected in the other. I mentioned before creating an array and biasing slices off of it may not be the use slices in your program. It also isn't the safest as we demonstrated. Now that you have a better understanding of how slices work, I am going to show you a much better way. I showed you before how to pre-populate an array using the curling phrases. We can say something like array equals a three element array of int items consisting of values maybe 1, 2 and 3. You can create a pre-population of slices using almost the same notation. You leave off the size within the square brackets. An underlying array will automatically be created for the slice so you don't have to worry about where to store it or worry about accidentally altering it. If you don't want to specify a starting element of values, you can leave those out by leaving the curly braces empty. So since we are creating a slice here and not an array, I am going to rename the variable to s for slice. Once you have a slice, you can then append values as needed. So you can say s is equal to append s, 4, 5 for example. We can append more with s is equal to append s, 6, 7 and 8 and so on. If we print the slice now using the format print line s and return this, you can see that all of the appended values have been accumulated in the slice. We don't have to worry about the underlying array at all, it just works. Until you have a more specific need, you probably find that this is the best way to create a list of items in Go. One more thing to know when working with slices, just as with arrays, you can use a for range loop. It's a loop over each item within the slice. It assigns the index of that element to the first variable and set up the values that's held at the index of the second variable you set up. So here, if we print each element as it comes up, we see element 0 is set to a value of 1, element 1 is set to a value of 2 and element 2 is set to a value of 3. Arrays and slices are beautiful to use when you know you are going to be pre-processing every element they contain in the same way. You start at the beginning and move to the end. But what if you frequently need to look up values within an array or slice? You'd have to look through every element it contains to find out the one you want. That's why Go offers max. They like to store values under keys that can be used to retrieve a particular element. I know that was a lot of information in one video. In the next video, we will be learning about maps in Go programming language. I hope you are excited for that. If you enjoyed this video, drop a like and leave a comment. See you in the next video. Happy coding until then.